Ugh. YouTube production studio. Oh. How long have I been here for? Oh. A few hours. Oh my God. And it's converted me to drinking. <laughs> You're not even watching bloody the maths final. That's I'm, how committed I'm, she is. And I'm nearly finished. Now or longer than just, I thought. Just swore. <laughs> Hurry up, mate. I am. Just I'm waiting for the download. Everything takes forever. <laughs> you love kids. I'm flustered. G'day guys, welcome to a new video and today we are here to talk about internet solutions whilst you're on the road. So as most of you would know, we've been traveling, you know, basically full time for the past 15 or 16 months and we get an awful lot of questions uh, via our videos, via our social media and that sort of thing around what do you guys do uh, for internet solutions while you're on the road? Um, just to qualify this video as well, uh, I don't talk about this much, but my past is I did 20 years at Telstra. Uh, I'm not a network engineer, but I did have several roles that are involved in mobility and mobile phones. Obviously these days with four, five, and even 3G, internet was uh, a big offering from those particular technologies. So whilst I'm not a net network engineer, I do know an awful lot about the technologies, but I'm also gonna try to keep it relatively simple in terms of my explanations today. Uh, hopefully, let me know in the comments if I get a little bit too technical for you. So I'm gonna talk about a few different solutions today. I'm gonna talk about just utilizing your existing devices, whether it's iPad, mobile phones, and those sorts of things. I'm also gonna talk about uh, internet or van mounted internet solutions utilizing the three, the four and the 5G network. And whilst I haven't got anything to demonstrate, I'll also be talking about uh, Starlink, which is, uh, if you haven't heard about Starlink, it is all the rage at the moment in terms of Elon Musk throwing some new satellites up in the air and effectively giving you the ability to connect to broadband or to MBN speed internet, if not quicker um, in the middle of anywhere and the one that I like to use is as long as you've got line of sight to the southern sky um, you know you could be at the end of Columbia Road right up in the Kimberley you've got access to that southern uh, star sky and uh, boom you've got uh, MBN speed internet so you know that is the absolute ultimate end of the scale but what happens is that regularly people ask me and Mavo um, what is the best thing? What's the best thing for internet? And the, the simple answer to that is there is no best thing for internet. It really depends on your circumstances, what you're using the internet for, how frequently you're using it. You know, are you doing really high gain things? Are you working from the road and needing to do video calls? Are you uh, streaming, uh, you know, your services like KO for your sport, Netflix, Disney, Stan, all of those sorts of things? Or are you just using it to keep in touch with friends and family, the odd email here and there, and keeping an eye on your social media? So there's a myriad of different reasons why you need the internet. And there's obviously a, a myriad of different solutions, all of which are going to cost you large amounts of money at the uh, the really high end like Starlink right down to you know simply utilizing what's already available in your mobile phone. We've also been uh, approached by a company called Cowfish Technologies. Cowfish Technologies are an awesome husband and wife team based down in New South Wales. They've got a young family and recently did a lap very similar to what Mavo and I did last year and they found that you know what when you're looking for a solution for your van, there's not that many really good ones out there. So uh, same as with the television as well. And the guys are engineers in, in the background. So once they got home, they thought to themselves, you know what? 
we're just going to build our own. So um, to full transparency, we're not actually taking a cart or anything like that. If you like the Cowfish Solutions, please get in touch with them. There's a link in the description with all of their details in there. We're not making any money out of this. I just really like the story. Jessica reached out to me and told, told me what was happening with their situation. And it's a young Australian family uh, with an engineering background doing some great things. So, you know, for me, that is one We've been testing their product now for a good couple of months just to make sure that we're happy with it. And two, we don't want to take money off a young family who are starting up a business. We'd love to see them, um, if, if you think that their solution is right for you, um, to get in contact with them and uh, go from there. So let's take a look firstly at our uh, standard devices, our iPads, our uh, mobile phones and those sorts of things and see what they have okay, to offer. Okay, first of all, let's just talk about bands and frequencies and I'm not gonna get into a great deal of detail, but did you know that in Australia, there is at least three different types or bands of 3G, five different types of 4G and currently one different type of 5G. Now that may be a little bit out of date. There may be a couple of bands of uh, 5G being used now, but effectively what I'm saying is that we talk about three, four and 5G, but even within each of those categories, there is different bands or different frequencies that signals are um, sent through. And uh, depending on your area and the technology on the towers in the area that you're traveling through means that you can have a completely different experience on 4G in one particular area compared to what you'll be having on 4G in a different area. So that in a way uh, talks about the difference in performance. Now, utilizing your mobile devices is probably the cheapest way if you've got a smart TV in your caravan or something like that. You can hotspot your phone. Most of the you know brand name phones these days allow you to use it as a personal hotspot providing you've got signal in your area. And it makes for a, I guess a nice cheap way. You're already paying for your mobile plan all mobile plans these days included a certain amount of data and uh, you know going back on my time at Telstra about 95% of people didn't actually use their included monthly data allowance on their postpaid plans so um, it is a really good solution providing you're not leaving uh, mainly populated areas too much and providing you aren't you know going really deep into the bush and those sorts of things you're already paying for it so why not give it a crack before you go out and spend a huge amount of money and there's nothing wrong with this solution we actually used it for an entire year did it get frustrating yes it absolutely did but because Mavo and I weren't working you know we're outdoors hikers and those sorts of things we didn't really worry if we couldn't get Netflix on our smart TV or we couldn't send emails and those sorts of things we had a satellite communicator called a Zolio which I've talked about on previous videos and uh, that was enough to stay in touch with our loved ones and, and keep them up to date with where we were and when we were safe outside of mobile coverage areas the fallback with these, going back to the conversation really quickly about the different bands or frequencies in the technology, is that the receivers in these mobile phones, even though they're quite expensive, are fairly rudimentary and entry level. So, you know, if you're in an area like we are here at Parklands, about 5Ks out of Kenilworth today, I'm still getting on my iPhone 11, three out of four bars of 4G, and on my iPad again, three out of four bars on my 4G. Now, if I was to jump in and do a really quick speed test, go allow. So here goes my speed test. Real time using the 4G network here in Kenilworth. So 22.14 megabits per second, and that is, you know, good enough to stream your Netflix, good enough to watch your KO, uh, good enough definitely to send uh, your emails and those sorts of things. Might be a little bit on the borderline if I was wanting to do a video call via Zoom or something like that, but that performance is good enough for most people, unless you're working and you need really high speed data links, both uploads and downloads. So that's a pretty good performance from this particular device. If I was to do the same thing on uh, my iPad here, I'd get around about the same, um, the same speeds because similar technologies, devices made at the same time. So at the entry level, given that there's really no cost other than your mobile phone cost, and if you're using an iPad, your iPad cost, um, 
and then you've got your monthly plan whether it's prepaid or postpaid it's a pretty good solution um, where you will start to struggle with this though is we would travel 10 k's further away from the main town here you're really going to start to see signal drop if not absolutely no signal and then if you haven't got a satellite communicator that's where you're starting to get into that murky ground of one you're uncontactable two if you have an emergency you can't get a call out and three you know your entertainment uh, your socials your uh, netflix your those sorts of things just simply isn't going to work for you so as i said it's a viable solution uh, for some people, uh, particularly if you, you don't really care if you can't get onto Netflix or you don't need to stay in touch with people all the time or you're not looking forward to the next email coming in. Um, but a viable solution, really low cost, and then you don't have to really think about it. So thumbs up to this one if you're not going out off the beaten track or out of the main towns. Uh, let's have a look at the Cowfish Technology solution uh, in my box of goodies over here. All right, so here we are with uh, the Cowfish Technology Solution. Now, this is our beautiful 3, 4, and 5G Band Connect solution. Now, as you can see, you've got all of these almost like spider leg antennas coming off. Now, you've got your 4 and 5 and 3G receivers built in here. And as you can see, there's four channels coming in. And then you've also got your two prongs at the back, which is firing out your Wi-Fi signal. So that is throwing the signal within a perimeter in the van. Now, you can use this modem standalone as it is using the 12 uh, volt cigarette lighter plug socket adapter that uh, I'll plug in in a second. And the beautiful thing about this is I can move this solution from my van, or if Mavo and I are deciding to take Barry the car, leave the van put at camp and then go into a different area, can actually take this device with me and take the internet with me providing I've got signal on that. Now, as I was saying, this utilizes the three, four and 5G network, but the beautiful thing is, is it also with the better quality antennas built into this device, and I'll show you this in a second, is that it has um, much better range. So if you're in a fringe coverage area where you may not just have any signal on your mobile phone or one bar, these antennas will pick up that signal far more, I guess, readily and, and amplify that signal or take the signal much more strongly to give you a better bandwidth and faster speeds and those sorts of things. Now this particular device looks a bit like a box jellyfish with uh, legs coming off it everywhere, although it's a bit bigger than a box jellyfish, is actually designed to be mounted on your caravan. So we're here in the Jawa Tawari uh, today now as you guys know we travel in lots of different jawa vans so we're not actually going to be installing this on their particular van or i don't think scott and john and matt would be very happy with me but um this is the beautiful part about this solution now um if you are purchasing this for your own van this antenna which does all of the jobs of these fins and even better would be mounted on top of your van you'd run this cabling through to a point in your van where you're going to set your modem up and then you only need your wi-fi prongs to send that wi-fi signal throughout your van the other awesome thing about this solution once it's permanently mounted is this antenna is much more strong than these antennas here so the further and further you get away from a coverage zone where you can see it on your mobile phone this will pick it up better this will pick it up even further away and give you faster speeds the other thing that you can do with this solution and this is going to sound really weird is you can switch off the 5g network to the 4g network if you want or off the 4g network onto the 3g network if you want now you're probably thinking why would i want to swap off the 4G network to the 3G network. And the simple fact is, when you're traveling to areas, particularly where they're big holiday destinations, anybody's ever been to Kununurra or Catherine, or maybe even Broome and those sorts of places, their cell towers are built to deal with the two or 3,000 people that live in that area, not the 25,000 tourists that are there in peak season. So like in Kununurra, you're sitting there with four bars of 4G and you're going, I can't get a signal. I can't download my Facebook feed. I can't get that email to come through. The beautiful thing is with this Van Connect is there may actually be 
a stronger bandwidth and faster signal coming from the 3G than the 4G in areas like that. And it will swap between the, those signals to pick up the best signal for you. So I really love this cowfish solution. Now with, um, with the modem here, it simply takes a SIM card in the back here where my finger is in pointing. Now again, back to the economics of this, obviously the hardware has a cost associated with it, and that will be in the link um, that I put into the description of this, but you can, if you've got one of those little SIM unprickers for an iPad, or easy access to your SIM out of your mobile phone or iPad and those sorts of things, you can take your SIM out of your phone and put it into the back here and utilize the data that's in your included plan. It's also not locked to Telstra or Optus or Vodafone. So if you're traveling the outback, and it's a good idea to do this because we found that we both had Telstra uh, sims when we did our travels, but some people that had Optus in some areas, only a few, actually had better coverage. So you can swap uh, your, sim com your sim companies out or your different sims out from different companies and, and get the best of the signal that's available to you. So what I'm gonna do is, obviously we're not gonna install this, I'm just gonna run off this uh, beautiful little Wi-Fi hotspot and uh, see what the speed difference is. We saw uh, on my iPhone earlier, it was 22 megabits per second. Let's have a look and see what the cowfish does. All right, so here's our cowfish Wi-Fi modem. I'm just going to turn Got a bit of a charging station going here. I've got drone batteries and shaz of the speaker. I'm just gonna turn the little red button on the bottom and we're gonna fire this solution up. We've got the green LED on the back there, so we're away. So I'm just going to get my, uh, my MacBook connected up to the, uh, to the Wi-Fi signal and see how we go. All right, so here we go. I've got the Wi-Fi network available to me now. So I'm gonna jump on Wi-Fi. That is all good. Now I'm gonna open a browser and I'm gonna go speed test by Ookla. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. And I'm gonna hit go. So here we go. We'll go allow. So there you have it, uh, and now the upload's going through, but you've got a speed of almost 40 megabits per second now, and we're only connected through Wi-Fi, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, drop in signal between the modem, which is about three meters behind me. But as you saw um, from a mobile phone, which came up at 22, we've almost double our speeds. We've also got a 10 megabits per second upload rate. So, with that particular solution, we're now out of the danger zone if I was doing a video call or something like that. So um, a, a doubling in our uh, solution capability sitting in exactly the same space as uh, where I did the initial test on my iPhone. So you can already see the benefit of this particular device. As I've already said as well, if we had that area which is even stronger than the uh, fins that are on that Wi-Fi modem, um, we'd be getting even better speeds. So that um, 22 is on that borderline of whether we can run a good video call, get a really solid stream if we're watching. All right, so there you have it, guys. Uh, the Cowfish solution uh, is, is lived up to, I guess, touted to do. Uh, it has given us uh, double the signal. Uh, actually, recently, uh, you would have seen one of our previous videos down at Broken Head. We were right on a uh, fringe coverage zone and we were getting only 10 megabits per second out of our iPhones, switched to the Cowfish and got 60 megabits per second. Um, so we've seen it up to six or seven times the actual coverage speed uh, compared to the mobile phone so sure there is a cost associated with the hardware but the beautiful thing is once you've paid for that modem once you've paid for the van and uh, the van antenna in the install if you choose to go that way um, 
you've, you've got no extra cost if you're going to use the SIMs uh, that you've got in your mobile phones. You can also get a standalone mobile broadband plan from all of the providers uh, that will come with an extra cost, but um, make sure you're utilising the data in your plans before you go and spend any more money. It is a pain in the butt to have to take your SIM in, in and out of your phone, um, but for an extra $100 a month, I'd prefer to be taking the SIM in and out of the phone. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about with the Cowfish solution, which will differentiate it, I guess, from Starlink, is that the fact that the 12 volt setup here only draws about 0.7 of an amp per hour. So if you were to think about a, a compressor fridge when you're traveling, that's up to six amps. So there's a significantly lower amount of power being drawn. And because it's 12 volt, you don't have to be running inverters. So if you haven't got an inverter, everybody knows that inverters and battery setups are quite expensive. Um, and that's a drawback of Starlink because it only runs on um, 240 volts. So you will need an inverter to run it. Whereas the um, Cowfish solution, as you saw a little bit earlier, uh, plugs straight into the 12 volt and only draws 0.7 of an, of an amp. So you can effectively leave it switched on. Now you can even use it if you're um, running the antenna on the roof. If you're driving with the kids in the back, the Wi-Fi signal will reach the back of the car. So uh, the kids can be, uh, you know, on YouTube or doing whatever the kids do on their mo on their mobiles or iPads these days. Um, but it's another solution. Now, bear in mind, if you're trying to do a video call from the car, you're going to be swapping towers as you move uh, geographically from one to the next. So it's not going to be awesome for video calls, but it may be enough to keep the kids nice and quiet on those longer drives. So um, you know, that's that's next level. The kids don't have to have uh, a prepaid or a postpaid sim in their phone you could actually be just running off the wi-fi that's being produced from your caravan as you drive along the road so pretty cool all right let's talk about starlink so hey guys we've decided to launch our own microfiber lightweight towel we've worked really closely with our supplier to get them as small and as lightweight as possible so it's easier for you to pack for your trip so let's compare them to normal beach towels so when we're packing the van let's see how much space we save normal cupboard normal beach towels we'll pop our sand free lightweight towels in there and I can even push them to the back. That's impressive. I'm impressed. With your little bag, I guess you're wondering what you can do with that if you don't want to just store your towel in there. So you could store your sunscreen, your phone, and your sunnies all fits in. It's a handy little so if you want one of these awesome towels, jump onto emptynestadventures.com.au and for our awesome followers, 10% discount code ENA10 at the checkout. So uh, as I said, uh, we haven't got Starlink. Um, if we do another full-time lap or we uh, can find ourselves into uh, job roles where we can be on the road permanently, which we're working towards at the moment, uh, we most certainly will be getting Starlink. I think it's a fantastic solution uh, for people who are using the internet uh, to its fullest capacity, as I've already talked in the video around video calling, high-speed uplinks and downloads and those sorts of things, even YouTubers that are on the road all the time. The biggest fall, and sorry, uh, as I sort of explained a little bit, because it's a satellite solution, all you need is line of sight to the southern sky to get your signal. So um, regardless of where you are in the country uh, and those sorts of things, um, it's just mind blowing that you can be completely away from any type of uh, internet mobile solution, whether it be three, four or 5G, um, be in the back of nowhere and still be getting, you know, MBN speeds. Uh, Starlink always talk about 25 megabits per second, but it obviously goes uh, a deal faster than that, depending on your um, 
connection quality and also uh, the amount of congestion on the network. Now there's not much congestion on the network in Australia at the moment. I haven't seen anything in the blogs around congestion and Starlink in Australia but there's an awful lot coming out of the US where a lot more people are using it so that may be something that becomes an issue down the track but um, again for high uh, internet users uh, it's a great solution. There are some limitations though and it's not for everybody and the reason I say that is one, number one simply the cost. So you're you know, looking at $174 per month for your Starlink connection and you're also looking at $924 once off for the hardware. Now if you're looking for that hardware to be permanently mounted on your caravan as well, there'll be the, a cost associated with whoever you choose um, an ICT professional to come out and actually uh, do that wiring and, and make a permanent solution on your caravan. So there are the costs associated, as I was sort of saying with the cowfish solution or just using your mobile phone to hotspot, you've already paid for the plan. So if you don't you know, uses enough data to warrant going and paying for a separate mobile broadband plan, you can you can do that. The other challenge is if you're not on the road all the time, um, you're, you're paying for your NBN at home in most instances as well. Now, with Starlink at that $174 per month, the beautiful thing is when you're not traveling, you can turn it off, um, but it's a bit harder from a home internet solution, particularly if there's people staying in the house. Um, so you kind of got multiple costs. So you've got your Starlink cost at $174 per month, your MBN cost at home, if you haven't turned it off, um, potentially $45 right through to about $115 a month. And then you've also got still the cost of your mobile phones. Now, you know, that varies uh, widely between prepaid and postpaid and the types of inclusions you have on your plans but Starlink can get quite expensive. Now as I explained if you're utilizing the internet all day every day even when you're on the road then that cost is is, is nominal because you need it um, to do what you're doing um, but if you're just traveling you want to do the odd email watch the odd Netflix show you really need to do the equation on that $174 a month that's the reason that we didn't go for it when we did our lap last year we could live without the internet so we just decided that it wasn't uh, the solution for us at that point in time. Now, the other thing that you're going to need to watch with Starlink is that uh, when you uh, get your kit sent to you, so it's all self-installed. So if you don't have a basic level of proficiency with installing things, an example, when, when you cut over to MBN, if you had a professional come out and do that work for you, um, there is no Australia-based or even in the US-based uh, support other than online tickets. So you have to be online to lodge a fault or a complaint or a problem with your Starlink service. And if you haven't got that general level of proficiency, it can be quite daunting to do that self-install of the Starlink equipment um, and get it all set up and running. Now, now some people do have that, and I'm, I'm not trying to bag it at all, but just be aware that there is minimal support, there is no, you can't just pick up the phone and call the internet service provider like you can, albeit that it takes a while, uh, with MBN or you know Telstra or Optus or those guys, but um, Starlink does not have a telephone support presence. It is simply purely online. So if, you, if Starlink goes down, you're in the back of nowhere and you can't get an internet upload through your mobile phone or anything like that, you basically have to drive till you can um, get a mobile phone signal to at least get a trouble ticket launched. So that is a limitation as well. And there's one final limitation, which I will show you in a second. Okay, so as I detailed in uh, the cowfish section of the video, it runs on 12 volt and it only pulls 0.7 of an amp per hour, which uh, is minimal usage. And also, um, if I was to take this and plug it into the car or something like that, most people have 12 volt outlets in their car. Um, so there's no ad additional cost in terms of the power supply required to make your cowfish uh, 5G or 4G or 3G hotspot work for you. The issue with Starlink is that it needs to run off 240 volts. So some people do have inverters in their caravans uh, and some people like I have a really nice 12 volt system in the back of Barry as well that has an inverter, but not many people do. So if you're one of those many people that have an older caravan or um, one that you didn't opt to uh, spend a lot of money on your battery setup, inverters can get quite expensive because it's not just the price of the inverter, but it's also the cost of the batteries associated to 
store the power to make that inverter work. Now Starlink will draw around about 2.5 amps per hour which is about four times the cowfish solution but you're also going to be running your inverter so your inverter is going to draw up you know around one amp per hour as it's running as well so you, you're kind of looking at um, a five to six times power draw. Now if you're only using it in short sharp bursts that's not a massive issue but you're also looking at that cost if you haven't got um, inverter and batteries and those sorts of things in your car or in your caravan which which really then makes the you know, $984 for the hardware $174 per month for the um, for the plan and then the installation and then an upgrade in your battery system and inverters and those sorts of things it really becomes quite expensive you could be looking at up to you know 10 grand for a really good battery setup but like um it, it's just another consideration guys again back to what i said at the beginning of the video what's the right thing uh for me which many people ask it really just depends on how much you're going to be using it and how much you can justify the costs now if you're whacking good batteries and inverters and that sort of thing into your van or your car you can also use them for all the other things that you can use batteries and inverters for as well so it's not just purely for the internet but if that is a catalyst for you to go and do that the cost of starling starts to become really high so there you have it guys there are other uh, internet solutions that are available self i go um, i can't remember the name of the the most popular rv one as well so there's lots of uh sort of quality um, solutions out there but what i would say guys is jump onto cowfish media's website the link is in the description of this video it's a small family business doing some amazing things from an engineering standpoint you know um we've really been happy with uh their solution saves me from uh going and spending all that money on starlink for the time being hope that has covered a few things off for you today as I said at the beginning of the video, I could have gone into much more detail uh, around the challenges that you face with internet when you're traveling, but I just wanted to keep, um, I guess, the language and the terminology understandable for everybody, because not everybody has uh, the background in internet that I have. Maybe a few of you out there who have a lot more. Any uh, questions or comments, whack them in. We love getting that. And I hope you found this uh, video useful, guys. Um, safe travels. And uh, hopefully this might help you uh, get a bit of better experience while you're on the road. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.